There's been a bit of an uproar this past week due to Obama's signing of a recent bill that has become affectionately labeled the Monsanto Protection Act, or H.R. 933. So much so that it's led Senator Barbara Mikulski to publicly apologize for letting the provisions slip through. However, this is really only a small part of a much bigger pattern of corruption and collusion between Monsanto and the U.S. government. Senator Roy Blunt, a Republican from Missouri, who crafted the wording for H.R. 933, has been accused by Senator John Tester of having collaborated directly with Monsanto in the creation of the provision. This shouldn't be surprising considering that Monsanto is one of Blunt's top campaign contributors. Blunt also accepts contributions from the Crawford Group, a registered lobbyist for Monsanto. Now, The controversy in this bill is tied to Section 735, which is of course written in such a jumble of incomprehensible legalese that it's highly difficult to interpret. It's designed to make the eyes glaze over without registering that anything of significance has been stated. This is facilitated using a common legislative technique of referring to sections of a separate law, so that you have to go read the unintelligible fine print in that second document in order to understand what's actually being said. That second law in this case is the Plant Protection Act. In the description of this video, you'll find a link to both documents. Now what section 735 of H.R. 933 states is that if a plant is determined to be a biological pest and is therefore brought under regulation and restrictions which prevent it from being planted or transported within the U.S., the Secretary of Agriculture shall immediately grant a temporary permit or deregulation to any farmer, farm operator, or producer that requests it, regardless of what any other laws or courts may order. Now the word genetically modified organism isn't mentioned here, and that's part of the skillful way that this was designed to slip through. Only someone who knows that by default genetically modified organisms are considered biological pests until they've been approved by the Department of Agriculture, and that they are reclassified as pests if shown unsafe, would understand the implications here. To distill this down to one sentence, if a farmer wants to grow a genetically modified plant that's been outlawed because it's been found to be harmful to the environment or human health, all they need to do is contact the Secretary of Agriculture and they will be immediately issued a permit to cultivate these plants. Essentially, it makes it impossible to stop a genetically modified plant from being used in the United States, regardless of any laws or rulings that are made to outlaw them. Now, of course, one might be inclined to let Obama off the hook for signing this law. After all, it is written in legalese and one could presume that he just made an innocent error. But this would require overlooking the extensive evidence of the Obama administration's incestuous relationship with Monsanto among which include his appointment of Michael R. Taylor, former Vice President of Public Policy for Monsanto, as his FTA Deputy Commissioner for Foods and Veterinary Medicine, his appointment of Roger Beachy, former Director of the Monsanto Danforth Center, into a position at the USDA as the Director of the National Institute of Food and Agriculture, and his choice of Islam Siddiqui, former Monsanto lobbyist, as his Agriculture Trade Representative. Now, anyone who thinks that the revolving door between the government and Monsanto is something new should look into Monsanto's connections and dealings with both of the Bush administrations and the Clinton administration. This has been going on for a long time. The purpose of this video is not to motivate you to write a letter to these corrupt senators or to inspire you to vote the bums out. None of that will have any meaningful effect. The system can't be fixed at this point. The corruption runs so deep that it has become literally inseparable from the political machinery. We don't have corporations influencing government. Corporations have become the government. Only when you come to terms with this and realize that the solution to this problem is not going to be found in elections or petitions will you be willing to consider a course of action that really will make a difference. For more down that line of thought, please watch our video entitled U.S. Government Preparing for Collapse and Not in a Nice Way. Our only chance lies in reaching a critical mass of awakening. We need to reach that critical mass quickly. It's not for me or for anyone else to dictate to you what your role in this awakening should be. But it should be obvious that we all need to make an effort. If each and every one of us makes use of the skill and the knowledge that we have to alter the course that we're on, I sincerely believe that it would be enough. In that sense, don't wait for a solution. It may be you that has the solution. If you feel it's important for other people to hear this message, please like and favorite this video and share it through as many avenues as possible. Post it to Facebook, post it to Twitter, post it on your blog, send it to your friends via email. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to this channel, Storm Clouds Gathering on YouTube. We've got new prepared videos every Monday and Wednesday, a live YouTube broadcast every Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern, and starting tomorrow, we'll be having a geopolitical analysis by Caspian Report every Thursday. For updates, bonus content, and commentary, please follow us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Storm Clouds Gathering, on Twitter at Collapse Updates, and of course, our website, stormcloudsgathering.com.